Javier Farhe is a Latin America analyst. He joins us now from London. Good to have you back with us, uh, Javier. With more than 20,000 positions to fill, including the presidency, these have been described as Mexico's biggest elections. We know Claudia Scheinbaum is seen as the front runner. She's also a political ally of the incumbent president, Lopez Obrador. Uh, what does she bring in terms of uh, her political platform? What is she promising to deliver? Well, as your correspondent in Mexico City rightly pointed out, uh, she's talking about continuity. Uh, again, uh, there's been a reduction in poverty. She said that she's going to continue that, but poverty still affects 36% of uh, a population of 126 million people. So she's got a challenge to complete the job. There's been a reduction in poverty with an increase of minimum wage, with a scholarship for young people from the poor, etc. One of the only challenges that she has is to get the middle classes on her side. Uh, many critics of Mr. Lopez Obrador say that the middle classes uh, have been... Uh, in a way, um, harassed by the president because he's concentrated his job in resolving poverty in uh, Mexico. She needs to get those middle classes on her side. One of the advantages she has is that she has an academic background. She has a doctorate in physics. And it would be important for the scientific community as well, which feels neglected, to be on her side. On the other hand, there's an extremely important is the relation with the U.S. When Mr. Lopez Obrador's government, he had a relatively good relationship with Mr. Trump when he was president, and he did a lot to try to stop the immigration that goes from the, the Mexico to the United States by closing the borders with Central American countries, which is from where many of the immigrants come. She's going to have that challenge to see how she's going to get along with whoever is elected in the United States. Uh, but also... Um, is insecurity. That's an, an issue that is being mentioned in your report, very rightly so. Insecurity is a huge problem. 30,000 people at least die every year because of that. Uh, she needs to tackle the issue, the power that the drug cartels have, the Sinaloa cartel, etc., etc., the, the Night Templars cartel. There's all these cartels which are fighting one another, control certain parts of Mexico, and are sometimes the border with, with the United States, like Ciudad Juarez. She needs to tackle that because that has been a problem for decades, and no president has been able to to uh, defeat them in, in many ways because they are well-armed and well-funded. That's going to be a big challenge for her. Uh, in fact, the opposition made it uh, as part of their campaign insecurity and accusing Lopez Obrador of not doing enough to do that. It's been very difficult for any president before him, but it's going to be a big challenge for her. Uh, but also reduction of poverty. She's been popular among all the poor, because Mr. Lopez Obrador has done a lot for the poor, she's going to continue getting that support, which is basically the reason why she's going to win. But she's going to have the challenge of insecurity, get the middle classes on board to be able to continue growing the economy and the relationship with the United States in terms of immigration and see how that's going to happen. Obviously, Mexico and, and the United States, the relation has always been very, very tense in, in many ways and very close because they have a common border yes. and they have a historic you know, uh, sort of, you know, elements in that. But that's going to be crucial for the new president. Yes, and meanwhile, Javier, her main rival is the opposition-backed uh, former Senator Galvez. How significant is it that uh, the two main contenders are women and that Mexico could, in fact, have its first ever female president? Extremely important because Mexico has one of the highest rates of murder of women in Latin America, if not the world. Huge, especially in Ciudad Juarez. I've been there a few times and the situation is extremely bad. So to have a woman in charge is going to be quite challenging because of these levels of uh, insecurity, especially for women. Many women are murdered every day, raped and, 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 and killed in Mexico, and nothing has been done to solve that problem. So that's going to be one of the biggest challenges. In terms of the opposition, the problem the opposition has is that it's an alliance of parties which in the past were sworn enemies. The PRI, which dominated uh, Mexican politics for, for many cent for many decades. Uh, the, the Party of National Action, the right-wing party, which was rival of PRI, and the little party, the PRD, which was a split from the left of the PRI. This alliance of different ideologies has not worked out because they thought that if they got together, they would give uh, George Till Galvez a chance to win. It has not worked because the PRI, which is the biggest part of this alliance, is in total decline. They are going to lose a lot of votes in what you... Uh, you rightly said is the biggest electoral process in Mexico, renewing governors, uh, Congress, 
uh, mayors, etc., etc. So the opposition is going to have very little room for maneuver because they won't have enough votes to be able to op to put obstacles on uh, Mrs. Uh, Seinbaum to govern in Mexico. So she's got a huge advantage, but she's going to have to need to work with also the opposition as well because they represent in many ways the business sector, which many people, although not everybody thinks, has been slightly neglected by Mr. López Obrador. But she has such an advantage, Ms. Claudia Seinbaum, that it's going to be difficult for the opposition to, to be able to mount uh, some kind of like a hostile environment in Mexico against her. Okay, uh, Javier Farhe, we'll have to leave it there. Thanks so much, as always, for sharing your thoughts with us.